Welcome to Nostalgia Tech Lounge, the channel where we discuss all nostalgic things related to computers and technology. Today we're going to take a look at an old, obscure and curious project from early 2000s, the XPD desktop environment for Linux. And as you might guess by the name and what you see on the screen, yes, this was an attempt to recreate the Windows XP experience on Linux. And I know, some of the most hardcore Linux chats feel their blood pressure rise at the mere thought of something as blasphemous as this, but 20 years ago it did have its merits. Unfortunately, this project never really left its alpha stage and a huge part of its functionality is either missing or unfinished, but even despite that there is so much awesomeness to explore that I decided to make an entire video about it. Before we move on to software itself, let's talk about the history of this project. It was developed by José León Sierna between 2003 and 2005 to learn more about Linux application development and also just for fun. When he started this project, he thought it could be commercial and even thought some distributions like Lindos or Lycris, both of which were Linux distros that mimicked Windows XP, would be interested in it. Leon contacted Lindos and explained the idea, and they liked it, but they answered no. Despite that, he decided to carry on with the project, licensing it under GPL to make sure it's available for everyone. For any curious software devs watching this, XPDE was written in Object Pascal using Borland Kylix, which is also pretty much obscure these days. Myself, I have never used it, and if any of you guys have ever written anything using Kylix, please let me know in the comment section. Some of you might wonder why anyone would want to clone Windows XP desktop when there are other projects like KDE or GNOME and you could simply rise a KDE desktop to make it look like XP, but the idea wasn't to make a permanent desktop but instead slowly ease you into Linux and help you transition away from Windows. The version we're going to look at today is 0.4 from July 2003. There is a newer version, 0.5, which has a brand new look inspired by Plex style from early Windows Longhorn builds and features the newer Windows XP style start menu instead of the older Windows 9x one, but a lot of functionality from 0.4 like the file explorer or task manager seems to be missing. Thus, we are sticking with 0.4 for today. My Linux distro of choice for this project was the Google Old Red Hat 8.0 codename Psych from 2002 and just to make things clear and avoid confusion. This is not RHEL, the modern Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but classic pre-Fedora Red Hat. The installation is pretty straightforward, everything is described in the readme file. There is one caveat that is not mentioned, and in order to get the fonts to render correctly, you need to install the Windows font Tahoma. You have to copy it into this directory and run these commands to get X11 to acknowledge their existence. Once that's done, you're ready to go. After logging in, you're greeted with a desktop that, had it not been for a different logo in the start menu and different desktop icons, you would be forgiven for mistaking it with Windows XP. It's all there, the taskbar, the start menu, the system tray, the clock, desktop icons, even the right-click menus are virtually identical to XP. The default wallpaper mimics the famous Bliss, green hills and blue sky included. The theme is a one-to-one -one copy of Windows Classic theme. Sadly, this version doesn't include anything resembling the Luna theme, but I'm not complaining, the vibe is there. We have a proper taskbar complete with the start menu. It cannot be moved around or resized and there is no toolbar support. The task switcher, the system tray and clock all work fine. Start menu recreates the classic Windows 9X incarnation and I love how it says XP the e professional on the site where you would normally expect to see the Windows version you're currently running. We have the options to log out, shut down, the run dialog and a programs list. Documents, settings, search and help and support don't do anything. The file explorer is very rudimentary. You can browse the file system, we have a working folder tree, you can copy and paste files, the very basic stuff. It lacks the option to change the icon size, search for files or change any of its settings. The desktop icons retain the candy-ish Windows XP aesthetic, including a new icon for your home folder. You can move the icons around, although after logging out and back in, they do not retain their new positions. Overall, we have a basic working XP-like desktop. XPDE includes a bunch of apps replicating its Windows counterparts, including the Task Manager, Control Panel with a few working applets, the Calculator, Notepad, and even a Device Manager. 
sadly, majority of them have missing features like this desktop properties applet. Most buttons and drop-down menus don't do anything, which is not surprising considering it's alpha software. But even despite that, an amazing amount of stuff does work and does a really good job of replicating the functionality of Windows XP desktop. Let's take a closer look at a few of included apps, starting with Task Manager, which seems to be the most feature-complete app of the lot. You can monitor and terminate running applications and processes, as well as start new ones using the Run dialog. Performance tab works like a charm, including fully functional performance graphs for user and system CPU usage. The Network tab also works fine and displays your current network activity for all your network cards. The Users tab does have a working list of users, but the buttons don't do anything. We do have a working tray icon, however, complete with the CPU gauge. The calculator is complete, including both a standard and a scientific mode, and by the looks of it, it does everything a calculator should be able to do. Notepad is largely there, minus the word wrapping and printing features. You can open and save documents, insert the current date, go to a specific line and search for text. Control panel only has a few applets, most of them only halfway there. We can change the date and time, customize our wallpaper, modify the mouse speed, and there is even the system applet with a partially working device manager that allows us to check our devices. Unfortunately, without the option to manage the drivers. Even though the stock experience is lacking, there are a few third-party apps written by the community. Some of them are the character map, photo viewer, and of course paint. I mean, can you really have a complete Windows XP desktop without paint? Those were all native apps, and there is, of course, one other way to bring it all even closer to Windows, and that is, of course, Wine. We're really getting off the scale on the blasphemy meter. Thanks to the fact that XPDE theme is a near-identical replica of the Windows Classic theme, it helps Windows apps running under Wine blend in really well with everything else, to the point where you really need to take a closer look to be able to tell which one is which. Take a look at these two. This one is the native XPDE notepad and this one is from Wine. Good luck telling these two apart without looking at the window titles. Now, let's crank things up to 11. I've got KDE installed as well and have set the QT theme to Windows Classic. Now, we're getting into bizarre territory. We've got three different apps using three different toolkits looking virtually identical to each other. 15-year-old me would have probably lost his shit looking at this. Let's complete this blasphemous endeavor by running Microsoft Office. Word 97 runs without any noticeable issues on the wine, albeit a bit slow, but this might be due to the fact that this entire system is running inside PCM emulating a Pentium 2 450 MHz. I did try to install Internet Explorer 6, but unfortunately I have been unable to get it running and lost my patience for now. I might give it another try in the future to give this cursed trip down the memory lane a well-deserved grand finale. Overall, even though this was a fun and enjoyable experience, and I've been trying to give this a proper look for nearly 20 years, I wouldn't recommend using this as a daily driver even back in 2003. It lacks a lot of basic features, like the ability to change your desktop resolution or a fully functional file manager. You could use third-party apps or parts of other desktop environments, but at this point you would have been better off simply using KDE modded to look like Windows XP, which is something I've already seen in the wild in the mid-2000s in one internet cafe I used to frequent. And it did a really good job, as as a kid I was none the wiser and only realized a few years later when I finally had a chance to take a closer look at Linux. If you want to check it out yourself, I have added a new Linux section to my website, retrotechlaunch.com. You can download it there. I recommend using an older Linux distro like Red Hat 8, which worked very fine for me. Newer distributions might have some issues running this version of XPDE. I remember trying it under modern Arch Linux, but the start menu had problems rendering the icon transparency properly in the start menu. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever heard of XPDE in the past, or if you've ever tried to make your Linux system look and feel like Windows. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers!